In this screencast, we're going to spend some more time on Archimedes' principle, and this time we're going to take it a step further and learn how to solve different word problems using Archimedes' principle. Word problems such as this. A stone has a mass of 75.62 grams, but appears to weigh only 46.65 grams when submerged in water. A. What is the stone's volume? B. What is the stone's density? C. What would the stone appear to weigh submerged in 20% salt solution with the density of 1.152 grams per milliliter? D. What would the stone appear to weigh submerged in mercury with a density of 13.53 grams per milliliter? And E. The stone appears to weigh 52.66 grams submerged in acetone. What is the density of the acetone? Now, we're going to solve these one at a time, but before we do, let's make sure we have a visual on this. So here I have the stone. Notice how it has a mass of 75.62 grams. And by the way, in this video, we're going to use mass and weight interchangeably. I know weight is a force and should be measured in newtons, but if you'll give us that, it'll make it a little bit more convenient. So there's the stone hanging there, 75.62 grams. We're going to take that to be the real mass of it. Now, as we talked about in the... the uh, Archimedes Principle Part 1 video, that actually is being buoyed up a little bit by the air that's running, but that's probably negligible compared to how much it gets buoyed up by that buoyant force of the water. Look at that. In water, it appears to weigh only 46.65 grams, the loss of weight there due to that buoyant force caused by the water. Okay, so we have that visual. Now we'll get to our first question. What's the stone's volume? Turns out it's actually quite simple. But you can easily lose your way in this, and that's why I'm going to encourage you to use this table. In teaching this over the years, I've found students who use this table invariably do much better in solving these problems. The table reads volume of the object, in this case the object is the stone, volume of the fluid displaced, the fluid here is the water in that container, weight of fluid displaced, and weight lost by the object. And the BF there is to remind you we're talking about the buoyant force. Okay, this thing appears to have lost weight. Why? Because there's a buoyant force pushing upward on it. Okay, so what's the stone's volume? Well, we don't know that, so we can't start at the top of this table. Sometimes we start at the top, other times we start at the bottom. Sometimes we start at top and bottom and work toward the middle. But in this particular problem, I'm trying to find the volume of the object, so I'm going to work at the bottom. I can tell the weight lost by the object because I know the weight out of water, and I know the weight in water. Subtracting those, 28.97 grams is the weight loss. That's kind of like the buoyant force. Again, I know force isn't supposed to be in grams. It's supposed to be in newtons, but 28.97 grams will therefore be the weight loss by the object. Now, think about it. According to Archimedes' principle, the weight loss by an object submerged in a fluid will always equal the weight of the fluid displaced. So, the weight of the fluid displaced must be 28.97 grams. Those two are always going to be equal on this table. Okay? Now, 28.97 grams of water would have what volume? So we can move to the next line. Well, we need to know the density of water, and it's kind of understood in this problem that you know the density of water. It's 1. 1.000 grams per milliliter. Actually, a little caveat there, that density for water only applies at 4 degrees Celsius. That's when water is at its densest. Um, but you know what? Even at room temperature, where the water's expanded a little tiny bit, the density doesn't change a whole lot. It's a little less than one, but we're still going to just use one as a convenient density for water. So if we multiply that by one milliliter over 1.000 grams, grams cancel, 28.97 milliliters. That goes down then for the volume of the fluid displaced. And so notice how those two things will always be related by the density of the fluid. Okay, the middle two lines of the table. Finally, if the 28.97 milliliters of water were displaced, the object must have had a volume of 28.97 milliliters. So there it is. 28.97 milliliters is going to be the volume. And that's always, those top two are always going to be equal as well. Because think about it. A submerged object will always displace its own volume's worth of fluid. So we have the answer to the first part, 28.97 milliliters. Part B was, what's the stone's density? Well, you think about it, if you know density's equation, density equals mass divided by volume, you can simply take the mass, and you're thinking, wait, which mass do I use there, the 75.62 or the 46.65? Well, it's true mass is a 75.62 grams, 
Divide that by the volume, which we just found to be 28.97 milliliters. You got both the mass and the volume to four significant figures. So we have a density of 2.610 grams per milliliter. That's much more precise than we can usually get on a density because usually we're very limited as to how precisely we can measure the volume. Archimedes' principle allows for some very precise volume measurements. What might that 2.610 grams per milliliter be used for? Not to identify what the stone is made of. If you looked on a chart, you'd find that a 2.6 corresponds pretty close to limestone. So, perhaps that stone is made of limestone. Part C, what would the stone appear to weigh submerged in 20% salt solution? Density 1.152 grams per milliliter. Now look at the problem. You know that it weighs 46.65 grams submerged in water. Salt water is a little bit more dense, so you think it would create a greater buoyant force. We're expecting an answer that's going to be lower than 46.65 grams. There'll be a greater buoyant force, so it'll appear to lose even more weight. How do we solve that? Here's our little problem, and the question is, how much is it going to weigh now submerged in salt water? Okay. Let's think about the table. Where do we start? Well, now we do know the volume of the object. It's the same stone we used before, and we found the volume to be 28.97 milliliters in the first part, so it's still that. And if it's 28.97 milliliter volume, it'll displace 28.97 milliliters this time of salt water. Again, those will always be equal. How do we get from 28.97 milliliters of salt water to the weight of that salt water displaced? Use that density. This time we're going to have milliliters on bottom, so they'll cancel. And this gives us 33.37 grams. See, the number's not the same because it's not pure water, it's salt water. That goes then for the 33.37 grams of the weight of the fluid is placed. Again, those are always going to be connected by the density of the fluid. And by Archimedes' principle, it must have, the object must have lost 33.37 grams. Again, I'll say these will always be equal. Archimedes' principle states the weight lost by an object will always equal the weight of the fluid displaced. So 33.37 grams is the weight loss. If it actually weighs 75.62 grams, where there's a buoyant force on it that's pushing it up to the point where it's going to lose 33.37 grams, its, its weight in salt water will be 42.25 grams. Okay? Exact same problem, but this time we're going to get rid of the salt water and replace it with mercury. What would the stone appear to weigh submerged in mercury? Density 13.53 grams per milliliter. So we're going to lower that stone there into the mercury. Now, I know mercury is actually not a transparent fluid. It would be opaque. You wouldn't be able to see the stone if it were submerged in mercury. But just so you can uh, still see the stone, we have it there in front of it. Again, the table. Again, we know the volume, 28.97 milliliters. It's going to displace 28.97 milliliters of mercury. Again, those will always be equal. Makes it easy. 28.97 milliliters. This time we're going to use the density of mercury. 13.53 grams per milliliter, gives us a weight of mercury of 392.0 grams. Wow, 392.0 grams of mercury have been displaced. Again, those are going to be related by the density, as we just did. And that means the weight lost by this object is going to be 392 grams. Those will always be equal. Well, if I take 75.62, that's the actual weight of it, and subtract 392.0 grams from it, you know I'm going to get a negative number. Negative 316.3 grams. The buoyant force upper on this is greater than the downward force of gravity, so this thing's going to have a negative weight? What does that mean? Well, it means it's not going to sink. It's going to float in that mercury. And that shouldn't be a surprise because it's less dense. In the previous problem, we found the density of the stone. It was much less than the 13.53, the so it's going to float in that. And so I guess if you were asking how much it would weigh, since the scale would read zero, 0, 0.00 grams. But you still might wonder what that 316.3, that negative 316.3 grams represents. Well, it kind of represents the force you'd have to apply to get that stone to submerge. That's the kind of weight you'd have to put on it to make it submerge in mercury. So that gives you a visual on what that number represents. But if you were asked how much it would weigh, I would probably say zero because it's floating. Okay, final part of this. The stone appears to weigh 52.66 grams submerged in acetone. What's the density of acetone? So we're going to now put in some pink acetone. I should point this out. All these liquids other than the mercury are clear. 
colorless water, salt water, acetone. We're just making them different colors just to have you be able to identify that a liquid, a different liquid is being used. So we lower an acetone and it's 52.66 grams. Can we use that to figure out the density of acetone? Sure. Again, the table. I know the volume of the object that hasn't changed, 28.97 milliliters, so it's going to displace 28.97 milliliters. Hopefully you're catching on to the idea that those are always equal. <clears throat> but I don't know the density of the, uh, the fluid, so how can I how can I go from the volume of the fluid displaced to the weight of the fluid displaced, as I did in the previous problem? But wait a second. I have the mass out of acetone, 75.62, and I have the mass submerged in acetone, 52.66. Subtracting those gives me the weight loss. So I can now fill this in from the top down and from the bottom up. 22.96 grams is the weight loss. 22.96 grams must be the weight of the fluid displaced because, again, those two bottom lines are always equal. Well, if you look at the middle two lines, I've got all that I need for density. They just have to be flipped around. So density, being mass divided by volume, will be 22.96 grams divided by 28.97 milliliters. There's the density of acetone, 0.7925 grams per milliliter. Okay? I'm going to follow this with another problem involving a balloon and what its weight appears to be submerged in different gases. But for now, this is going to be the end of the video on Archimedes Principle Part 2.